All right. Well, we'll see how long that lasts. I'm not sure. But okay. Anyway, folks, um, this is something I I was actually thinking about doing this as a show and tell last month, and it obviously didn't work because uh, you'll see it uh, gets rather involved. But uh, um, a few months ago, back in August of last year. I got a notice on eBay and it said, uh, hey, there's this uh, Fairchild um, uh, curve tracer uh, available and it turns out there were like three of them all in a row. And I haven't seen one since, okay, but um, I ended up buying two of them. Um, if you can see it, it's kind of hard, but right now it's running a sweep on a, a, a 6L6 tube up here, 6L6 GC. So, uh, but uh, let's... Uh, Let's go ahead and, and talk about curve tracers and what they do, and what they um, and how they function, and what they're good for, and um, maybe uh, ones in your future. Okay, so um, what is a curve tracer? Well, first of all, is it an O-scope? Well, yeah. Is is it an ammeter? Um, yeah. As a matter of fact, uh, it's a uh, it's actually a voltmeter as well, and and it turns out it's really all of the above. Okay, and um, to demonstrate, let's just take a, a 2K uh, resistor and uh, run it on the, uh, the curve tracer here. Whoop, I didn't mean to do that. Let's go back. Okay. Uh, yeah, I get excited. Let's Calm see down. if we can... Calm down. Uh, <laughs> hang on a second. Let me get re -cue this. There we go. All right, here we are, our 2K resistor in there. We're going to put some voltage across it from the, um, and as you'll see on the scope here, it's a pretty very linear, as, as the voltage increases across, the current increases uh, upwards, okay? And that's what it's measuring, all right? So that's, that's what curve trafers really, re really do. They measure voltage in one direction, in the X direction, and current in the Y direction and see, well, why is that important? Well, we'll find out. Um, so this is the block diagram for a curve tracer. And uh, of course, it starts off with the device under test in the center here. That can be a diode or a transistor or a vacuum tube. Um, essentially, this uh, is the emitter. Uh, it, or if you were talking about a vacuum tube, it would be the cathode. And that's to ground. Uh, then we have the collector uh, at the top, uh, and uh, that, it, again, if you were talking about vacuum tubes, it would be an anode or a plate. Then we have this uh, thing called a base. Now, this is all transistor talk because this is a semiconductor transit, uh, uh, curve tracer, and most curve tracers are semiconductor curve tracers. So, but, um, but we would call that a grid, or the signal uh, grid, for the uh, a vacuum tube. Now, what you have also is a collector supply. This provides the voltages that would be the equivalent of a plate voltage in a vacuum tube, okay? And so as, the, as it measures the uh, voltage across the device and test, it generates a horizontal deflection. That's the voltage, okay? And it also develops, uh, it senses the current flowing through that current sensing resistor and generates the current um, uh, inputs for the deflection of the, uh, of the uh, uh, curve tracer. So um, then we have one more thing here. It's a, a, a step generator, okay? Let me get down the right click here. Okay, the step generator generates uh, various inputs at various voltages which would equate to different uh, grid of voltages um, for the uh, bias, okay? And um, what's interesting is that the, as the collector sweep generator generates its voltages in, in high voltages, it's, it's tied to the step, uh, base step generator so that each time you change um, a, a step, or you would, if you're talking vacuum tubes, each time you would change the bias voltage, it uh, gives it another sweep. And it looks like a continuous thing on a screen, but it's really a whole sequence of different events happening here uh, faster than you can see it, okay? So um, that's, what, that's how it works. And so um, 
almost all curve tracers have pretty much the same controls, okay? They have display controls, and these are related, to these same kind of controls as you would see in a, uh, uh, an oscilloscope. You've got uh, something to turn it on and adjust the, uh, the um, uh, grid uh, lighting so that you can see uh, what the scope is presenting. It has an intensity and a focus. And then you also have uh, these uh, settings here in the center, uh, your vertical and horizontal controls, okay? And uh, in a curve tracer, the vertical sensitivity is always in ampers, okay? It's always measuring amps. And this one, um, uh, this particular curve tracer runs from one um, uh, microamp up to 500 uh, milliamps per division. So um, at 500 milliamps, you can measure uh, if there's 10 grids, um, upwards of 5 amps, okay, on the curve tracer. I don't know if it'll handle it, but it'll display it, all right? Um, and then uh, the bottom control is for the horizontal sensitivity, and, and that's uh, the voltage. And, and this particular curve tracer will go up to 1,000 volts, okay? So uh, you select how many volts per, uh, per grid uh, on the display that you want there. And... Um, so then uh, the next set of uh, setting of controls are the base step uh, generator controls. And the, um, the base step uh, generator controls uh, do a couple of interesting things. They, they control essentially the base, all right? Um, or if you're texting va te uh, testing vacuum tubes, that would be your, um, your, your uh, um, bias voltage, okay? And so... Um, Let's take a look at this in more detail. The bottom two uh, controls uh, are your step controls. Now, in this particular curve tracer will do up to, uh, from step zero up to step 10. All right, so if you're, if you're thinking about curves from a, uh, a tube manual, uh, that means we could do um, five, uh, 10 or actually 11 different grid settings uh, on the tube. Um, different bias settings for the grid. Uh, and so right now you see that there's one on the left that's, that controls the, um, uh, the first step and the one on the, on the uh, right it controls the last step. Okay, and uh, the next uh, uh, above that is the range control and that uh, determines how many volts per uh, bias setting that you're going to put in there uh, or base setting if you're testing uh, transistors. In other words, um, is, it a, is it a 0.1 uh, volt per, per line? Is it 1 volt per line? Is it 0.01 volts per line? Okay, you can set that. And then there's some other settings for if you wanted to test um, uh, in, in amperage instead on the uh, base. Uh, uh, to the right in the center is the polarity. Okay, if you're testing a, a, a PNP, uh, transistor you need it negative if you're testing an NPN transistor it needs to be positive most uh, vacuum tubes use a negative bias so you'll see that most of the time I have it set to negative and then the control at the top it works in conjunction with the range setting so if the uh, normal uh, step is uh, one volt you can multiply it upwards of 11 times using the top uh, setting so uh, again, it gives you a lot of versatility as far as uh, what range you want to use in testing uh, your tubes or transistors, okay? Now here's a transistor under test, and it's generating sweeps, okay? And I'm demonstrating here um, the uh, step controls. So as we uh, turn this uh, knob here, you'll see the ones to the left are disappearing and coming back again, all right? Those are your steps there. Turn the other knob, the ones to the bottom are disappearing and uh, coming back again too. So that's, that's what the step controls do. All right. And um, then we also have the ability to use the multiplier here. This, this adjusts the difference in voltage between each step. Okay, so right now I'm increasing it and you see the, 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 the traces are separating. Now I'm decreasing it. The, there's less and less voltage between each step and uh, that's how that works, okay? So uh, those are what your controls for the uh, base set, uh, uh, setup do. 
Then we also have uh, the collector controls. Uh, the collector generates your high voltage. Okay, and um, let's see if we can get this to come up. Here we are. Yep, and we'll zoom in a little bit and uh, now look at this one here. Uh, starting at the bottom, there's a series resistor that controls uh, how much current is flowing through the collector. All right. If you're de dealing with very delicate transistors, you don't want a whole lot of current. If you're dealing with vacuum tubes, a lot of times you just let it run loose. You know, uh, who cares? Um, because the tube itself will will do self monitor. If anything else, you need to protect the uh, the curve tracer. So. Uh, but that's what that series uh, resistor does. The full voltage range uh, setting in the center, that uh, controls how many volts you're going to put on the collector. This, will, this particular curve tracer will do up to 1,000 volts. Okay? That's why I covered with tape all the connections and stuff. Uh, right now you're seeing 500 volts horizontal on that, uh, those tubes that are being uh, tested on the uh, curve tracer right now. So. Don't put your fingers where they don't belong, okay? Um, and then the, the one at the top uh, works in conjunction with that. That controls, it actually works at Variac. When I bought my uh, curve tracer, the Variac was bad. So I had to get a new Variac, but um, that controls the, this high voltage going to uh, the tubes or to the transistors, okay, for test. So uh, again, let's uh, demonstrate how that works. So I go over here to the collector sweep. And this will control the how much volts get sent across the horizontally on the screen. Okay, and I turned it down, turned it back up. That's what the collector sweep voltage does. All right, so that's enough with the controls here. Uh, what can you do with a curve tracer? Well, most are designed for the test of either transistors, which we've already seen, or diodes. Okay, and they generate curves. And the curves, and again, if you are familiar with any of the tube manuals, there's, they're, they're remiss with curves everywhere. Um, now, some uh, curve tracers can also be adapted to test rectifier and amplifier tubes. And, and this one happens to be one of those, all right? Um, and I knew that going in because I read about it in Alan Douglas's book about tube testers. But, um, um, so that's why I kept a, an open... Now, what are we testing here? This is a 1N4001 diode, okay? And um, turns out that um, as we uh, add current to it across the, uh, the diode, you get to a certain point and it starts conducting, okay? And it actually turns out that at 0.65 volts, um, it's generating uh, a one, uh, 5 uh, milliamps, and at 7 volts at the top there, it's 10 milliamps of current. And you see it kind of cuts it off that way, and that's how a diode works, right? Now, diodes are also only allow voltage in, a, in one direction. So how about if you run it the other way? Well, I tried that on this one in 4001 up to 1,000 volts, and it wouldn't, it wouldn't go backwards. So I got an old germanium uh, diode, put that one in backwards, and you'll see that uh, it doesn't conduct, it doesn't conduct, it doesn't conduct, and then all at once, boom, uh, it starts. To, that's the reverse voltage uh, that uh, the diode, any, any voltage beyond that, eh, it's going to burn it up. It's going gonna, it's gonna to flash. So. And, and that's pretty much, if you think about it, um, the, the standard silicon diodes that we use today, the 1N4000 uh, series, um, I've been told many times that they're all manufactured in the same plant. And they just run them on, on tests to see how much, how much handle they can handle. And that's how they grade them, uh, whether it's a, a, a 4001 or a 4007. It depends on how much current it will handle. Okay, so uh, that's kind of interesting. Now I needed some extra uh, extra uh, tools to test tubes with. Uh, you know, first thing you needed is a filament voltage. Okay, and I didn't show you, but you see at the top here is my HP power supply, and I'm I'm providing the six volts needed for these two vacuum tubes uh, from that. But you also um, this is a little gizmo Paul Hart put together. That's a 13 amp, 2.5 uh, volt filament transformer. 
and uh, it's all set up to test, of all things, 83 vacuum tubes, okay, or any rectifier tube that's a four pinner, all right. And then uh, I created this little box here for switching. Now, in the case of a 12AX7 where there's two uh, triodes in the same tube, I can test both sides of the triode and see if they're well matched. Or in the case, uh, as we have up here, of two uh, 6L6GCs, uh, I can um, test the two different tubes and see how well they match on the uh, curve tracer as well. Okay? So, um, and I also, uh, Paul Hart told me, I said, he said, make a breadboard, don't go ahead and build an entire uh, unit. So, uh, I don't know why he said I should use a breadboard, but I, I did. <laughs> and um, I made a little breadboard here for uh, testing the tubes, okay? Um, so anyway, this is a, an 80 rectifier tube. And uh, you see it's under test here. It's, it, it, it's rectifying, ver working very well. The 80 is a full wave rectifier, so when I switch it, it actually uh, changes the, uh, the plates that uh, it was testing it on. Um, this happens to be a, uh, an 83 mercury vacuum tube. And this is one of the better ones, okay? It's kind of stable and I'm testing one plate then the other. Uh, but uh, I found that uh, I must have 20, 30, uh, 83 vacuum tubes, uh, mercury vacuum tubes. They're used in the Hickok tube testers. The, um, the majority of them are more like this one. Like, uh, look, there's a, my own lightning storm going on here, you know? It's like, like holy shnikes, you know? I don't think that's really going to be all that great for testing my vacuum tubes. That is, um, it's interesting. Paul Hart uh, mentioned that his dad used to have a, an HF transmitter that used the 83s for rectification. And occasionally he'd say, ah, I'm getting a lot of hash, and he would change out the 83 tube, and it would work again. And it's like, well, that's what that is. That's like a little, little lightning storm going on inside the vacuum tube, okay? So um, what's interesting, that is the um, a solid state uh, rectifier that uh, Paul Hart has created. And uh, look how that one works. I mean, nice and steady. You switch it from uh, one grid to the other, uh, to the other side of the a rectifier, uh, straight as an arrow, okay? Guess what? I'm going to replace all my 83s with uh, solid state units. Um, it doesn't make sense to uh, see if we can have any lightning storms going on in my tube testers. All right, so let's get to the next level. We're going to test a triode here. This is a, a, six, a, a 6C5 triode uh, developed back in like 1938. I've got various settings set in here. Look at those nice curves that it's generating. Okay. Um, and, and this is a metal tube, so it's it's old. It's been around a while. Uh, but that's... Uh, now, what did I have to do to the curve tracer in order to make it... I just had to add vo um, filament voltage to the tube. Uh, that, was a, that was the easiest way you could do it, okay? But uh, let's get a little more sophisticated. How about a 12AX7 that has... Uh, I use this um, adapter here so that I, I didn't have to create another breadboard. Uh, but um, this is a nice, fresh, uh, these are all the different settings I put in there. Got the multiplier working. Um, uh, look at those nice curves on that 12AX7. This is a fresh one. The RCA came out, new out of the box. And when I switch sides to it, uh, they're pretty darn close. Okay, I mean, uh, now, why is that important? If you're using this in, um, in an a, uh, amplifier, and you're doing uh, some some uh, inversion kind of things for your uh, matched pair uh, amplifier tubes. They better be well matched in your 12AX7 that's feeding it. Otherwise, it's not going to work very well. Okay, so um, that 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 tests pretty nicely. Um, this is a 6V6. Now, 6V6 is uh, what Paul Hart refers to as a baby 6L6. Okay. This was the first time I started encountering some challenges. Um, I'm only running it at 180. Uh, oh, I had, a, I had a screen voltage in here, and because um, this tube requires a separate screen voltage, so um, normally it would run at 250. I found out I was tripping the uh, curve tracer, 
And what I found out was the problem. This top, uh, this is zero volts grid, okay? Does anybody ever run a 6V6 at zero volts grid? I don't think so, okay? But, but that generates a huge amount of energy. In fact, that's, that's at, set at uh, zero volts. This one's set at, uh, I think it was uh, 3.5. And then, this, so this one's at seven, this one is at ten and a half, and right on down. Okay, um, that's that's to match the uh, the uh, uh, curve uh, curves that you would find in the uh, uh, two books. Anyway, the point being is, um, if you dropped these first three uh, or four. Uh, grid voltages all at once the curve tracer works just great and that's what you see here on this uh, the 6L6's I've dropped a couple of them and now I'm running 250 volt screen 500 volts on the plate and 14 volts on the grid well actually a whole series of grid grid voltages on the, that tube so uh, anyway uh, I went the wrong direction let's see yeah there's that okay here's a 6L6 this happened to be one that Paul and I ran uh, on a Jagundo about five years ago. And I found the sheet from it, running at 500 volts plate, 6.3 volts on the filament, 250 volts on the screen, and um, here's the curves from it. Well, uh, magnet, uh, three and a half per, per grid step on the uh, grids. And I'm, uh, what else do I got going on here? Oh. Yeah, there's, I'm, I'm only testing from grid step number three uh, up to ten. So uh, there's, there's the curves, okay? Now, um, anybody know anything about uh, 6L6s or 6V6s? They're power beam tubes, and they have this little kink in here, okay? And that's very indicative of the tube. And, um, Randy, what's a KT66? A kinkless triode, okay? <laughs> and it's essentially a 6L6 run, uh, run as a triode, but it doesn't, def it doesn't show that kink if you ran a, six, a, a, a KT66 uh, on, the, uh, on the curve tracer. So just kind of interesting. That kink um, would affect performance if you're running the, 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 the tube in that range, all right? So what's next here? Um, how about the next step is to see if we can uh, figure out what uh, the general, uh, I mean, the, uh, the transconductance of this tube is. So using those curves, um, let's, how do you interpret these, cur these uh, tube curves, all right? Well, first of all, you have the amperage going upwards, all right? That's 0 to 100 milliamps. That's what this was set at. And then we have voltage going across the bottom, 0 to 500 volts across the bottom. A, um, a 6L6 should be, if you're going to test it according to the RCA uh, tube manual, you test it at 250 volts, 250 volts screen, and 14 volts negative bias. Okay? Well, it turns out that, that um, here are the curves at 10.5. 14 volts and 17.5, and those are the only ones I'm, I'm interested in. Um, now it turns out also that you can measure at the 250 volt mark that there's about 40 milliamps of current uh, between the 17.5 and the 10.5. That's a 7 volt scan span there, and roughly 40 milliamps. Now, if you uh, look up the definition of uh, GM or transconductance, uh, it turns out that GM is the delta in the uh, current um, per, uh, divided by the delta in the um, in the in the voltage. Okay, and the voltage, the current is the plate current voltage at the selected 250 volts, and the uh, the um, the voltage is the grid voltage variance, the delta and the variance, which in this case is 7 volts. You plug in the numbers, you do the math, it turns out that I'm measuring about 5,700 uh, MOS, or, or uh, that's the GM, the, the uh, transconductance of this tube. That's what I'm measuring. 
uh, five years ago when uh, Paul and I put this on his Jagundo, it was 250 vol uh, volts plate, 250 volts screen, 14, minus 14 volts grid. That's the center point here of this delta. And uh, it turns out we measured at 5850. Uh, now, this is a very broad approximation. If you notice, the, the distance between here and here is not the same as here and here. If I was going to do this again, I would decrease my step voltages and, um, and get a much more accurate reading in this range here of how much in milliamps per the voltage change. And that would give me a much better reading of what the... Uh, but but that's, that's not a bad approximation. You know, that's, with, that's within a few percentage points. Uh, so the curve tracer is pretty versatile. And uh, moving on to the next slide here. Okay, here's what you see right up here right now. Um, I've got the uh, two uh, 6L6GCs. These are the types of uh, tubes that are used in guitar amps and other uh, audio amplifiers. 6.3 volts on the filaments, 250 volts on the screen, uh, and 250, 240 volts going in this direction. Um, and uh, let's see. I'm going to switch from one tube to the other. You tell me what you see. Oh, little difference there. Uh, that's tube one. That's tube two. They're not exactly matched. Okay. I wouldn't want these in my amplifier. They're not close enough in, in tolerance, in my estimation. Again, 6L6 tubes, notice the kink in here. Okay. All right. So what happens if you want to get... Well, let's see what we got here. Yeah, what if you want to get a curve tracer? There's all different kinds of options out there. Uh, a lot of them, though, uh, maybe they're not so useful. All right, let's take a look at some of the different ones. First of all, the granddaddy of them all, the Textronics uh, 570. Um, this one came on the market in 1956. 50, yeah. And... Um, the Textronics uh, 570 uh, is a dedicated tube uh, curve tracer, okay, and it does a pretty darn good job. The only thing is um, they only made about a thousand of them. So um, as um, time goes on, uh, you're finding less and less, less of them available. Plus, they're all over 50 years old. They were on the market from 56 to 66. Um, they've got all kinds of built-in bells and whistles. They provide the uh, filament voltages. They provide the screen voltages. Uh, everything's all there. It's, it's the granddaddy and the best of the best of the best as far as dedicated um, vacuum tube curve tracers. But um, they're a little pricey. Okay, this is one that just <laughs> ended a couple of months ago. Uh, I don't spend that much on some of my cars, okay? But uh, <laughs> certainly not that much on my trailers. But um, um, wow. tubes, maybe, yeah. <laughs> but you know, at, at two bucks a pop, that's uh, tw uh, two thousand lots, all right. So uh, I'm doing all right. Um, the the follow-on unit was the Textronics 575. Now this was a dedicated. Uh, a semiconductor tester. It wasn't designed to test vacuum tubes and it actually it has some major flaws uh, relative to testing vacuum tubes. It only um, uh, as it came out of the factory it only had 200 volts that they could put across the plate and that doesn't even that doesn't test a whole lot of tubes all right. Um, now they made a mod that uh, a, uh, a mod was called the uh, the 122 C mod on these that would double that to 400 volts, which is much more useful. Um, but it still had another problem, and that is that the grid voltage, um, could, the, the best you could do was 10 steps at one volt a piece. And um, that's, that's not broad enough to cover most tubes. Um, but any, in any case, it's well used uh, even today as a, uh, a a tester for vacuum tubes. It's been adapted for that, and uh, there were, it, it was in production from uh, 1958 until 1971. There was a lot of them made, and uh, they're a lot more affordable. Uh, this is one that came up on eBay recently and uh, sold for what 
six hundred bucks. So uh, with free shipping. So that's important. Those they're not light. <laughs> it's about a hundred dollars of shipping involved. Um, the the follow-on to this actually is a very good candidate for testing vacuum tubes. Um, it uh, the 576 had a lot of uh, bells and wh whistles that. Uh, uh, need, were needed for testing uh, the advanced semiconductors of the time. This particular unit came on the market, uh, oh, it was around the, uh, the late 60s or early 70s actually. And um, uh, uh, it, it will cover the um, uh, sufficient plate voltage, uh, sufficient grid uh, steps and grid voltage, and, and sufficient current to test pretty near any tube you want to with it. Uh, and uh, some of them are a little pricey, uh, but uh, a whole series of them recently sold for something that's uh, maybe uh, a candidate for uh, for purchase. You know, uh, somewhere around uh, five hundred thousand bucks, okay, uh, depending on their condition and what came with it. So, um, <clears throat> and eBay is really the only source for these things. I've never seen one at an auction at any of the Mark meetings over the years. Um, now, if you want to step into today, uh, Tektronix um, uh, made this 370 scope. Uh, uh, it's a curve tracer. It has every bell and whistle you could possibly imagine. It'll actually output to a, uh, a printer uh, what you see on the screen. Uh, but these, are, again, are uh, in the range of um, very pricey, okay? <laughs> Uh, so, not too many amateurs are going to be buying uh, or dropping $10,000 $10, on a curve tracer, okay? Um, but it, I guess if you're selling vacuum tubes, it might be a good candidate for that. Uh, now, this is something I came across recently. There's a guy out there, he's selling this um, a vacuum tube curve tracer adapters, okay? And his point is that a standard uh, tube tester has a filament voltage, it has screen voltage, it has sockets, it has all the switches, and then you use a, uh, a circuit board, a not a breadboard, this one's actually uh, works. Uh, <laughs> um, it, it, uh, you embed that in your, cur in your tube tester and then you can input uh, your uh, grid and plate voltages from a curve tracer, okay? And um, he sells it as a kit. It'll only cost you about 80 bucks to build. But you got to have a curve tracer, you got to have a tube tester in order to make it work. Um, and then it's it still has its limitations. Uh, it'll it only uh, test up to a, a certain degree on the voltage and screen. Um, it's not the ultimate answer, but it is an improvement over um, just using a, a regular tube tester for testing tubes, okay? Um, and uh, there's, there's this, the, uh, the block diagram for that. So you, you, it only does 200 volts on the screen maximum. Um, it's got uh, a couple of different voltage selections here for the base, and then the collector uh, brings in. Again, if, you're, if your um, curve tracer only generates 200 volts, it's only going to put 200 volts on the, on the tube that you're testing. So, But um, anyway, I thought I'd talk about it. And um, this is another option. It's called the, um, the uh, U-Tracer 3 Plus, okay? Uh, the U-Tracer is a kit that you can buy, uh, and it is dedicated to testing vacuum tubes. And um, it uses a, um, a, it, this is what it looks like. And I saw one that is, this one is nice in a little box with a meter on the front and the controls. I saw somebody built one in a cookie can, okay? <laughs> and um, it was kind of interesting. I, I think, personally, I think it's cool, you know? I mean, well, why not? Use a little round cookie can, you know, and you can have Christmas scenes on it and stuff like that. But uh, uh, again, um, it interfaces with a computer and the computer does all the controls and uh, then it generates curves. And this is what the curves look like. Uh, what's under test here is a 6BQ5, uh, 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 which is a very popular audio tube. Um, and it's generating the curves for it. So uh, that's another option. 
and these things run about 250 bucks US. Uh, the company selling it is out of the uh, out of the UK, uh, so um, 225 euro, 250 bucks US. Okay, it's a good candidate for a, a curve tracer, and and one that I've seen um, some of the major. Uh, suppliers of vacuum tubes, matched vacuum tubes, uh, addressing the fact that they use uh, these to, to help test them. Okay, so it's it's a relatively inexpensive and uh, accurate solution. Um, I'm sure there's some drawbacks. I haven't studied it that much, but uh, something to look into. Now, um, now where is this one? This one's sitting up on the on the bench here. The the Fairchild uh, unit was um, developed in 1960, uh, what was it, 7. It came on the market in 1967, uh, made by Fairchild. Fairchild was making semiconductors at the time, and uh, they um, uh, were using the profits from that. They, they generated this uh, curve tracer, okay? And uh, it was designed, it's all solid state. There's no tubes in it other than the CRT, which is kind of cool. It'll do up to 1,000 volts on the plate, uh, up to 100 volts on the grid. Uh, it only tests either negative or positive grid at, at one time. You can't do both. But I don't know who runs their vacuum tubes at positive grid uh, voltages. Maybe Randy knows because some of the audio guys just cranking mu music out. But uh, um, it actually was um, addressed in Alan Douglas's book, uh, Tube, Collect Tube Testers and uh, Classic Electronic Test Gear. And um, as, as a very good candidate for testing vacuum tubes. And as you can see, it is a good candidate. And actually, it was quite affordable. Um, I picked up two of them. Uh, this one had $100 shipping on it. This one had free shipping, so about $300 a piece. What ticked me off was uh, this guy said, or best offer, and he never came down from 85 bucks. okay? Um, but, um, and, and the other thing is, uh, I wish I had a newer manual. This is a preliminary manual. And in fact, some of the circuitry isn't even covered in it. Okay? But I've been able to get it working. Uh, you know, like I said, I had some issues. I had a, a, a little switch in it that was bad. Found one of those on uh, a really strange uh, website. And uh, uh, then I also had to replace the Variac. But... Um, Anyway, right now it's working pretty good. Is it perfect? Probably not, but uh, I haven't found any major flaws with it. And I've been very happy. The other one I have needs some more work, okay? And by the way, the one I bought did not come with this. Uh, he said, well, I used a picture from a different one that I sold, and he gave me $50 back. So I was very happy then. Um, it only cost me 250 bucks for this curve tracer, okay? So, um, these are the references, all the different references I use in preparing this uh, particular uh, presentation. Who's got questions? Do any of those come with socket plugins for tubes, or do you have to make the, your own? The only one that does is the um, is the granddaddy. This one, the Textronics 570. Okay, at four grand, you know. It, it, you know, if you're like you loaded, uh, I'm sure you could just drop it down, you know. There, there's only a thousand of them out there. So they're, they're kind of rare. And they're all, uh, they're all over 50 years old. Okay. Some of them 60, over 60 years old. So, uh, <laughs> yeah. That's it. Yeah, so, uh, some of them are older. Than, no, no, I'm older than they are. Okay, <laughs> but not by much. All right, not by much. Okay. Um, yeah, John. You mentioned using a tube tracer to match two tubes. What's the effect on the audio output if the tubes are not matched? Well, the problem becomes one, particularly when you're in. Um, in, in an audio set, they're using push-pull, okay? And if those tubes aren't matched closely, then, then you end up losing a lot of, of, uh, of the ability for the amplifier to really work right, okay? Um, they're, they're, out of, they're out of balance, and you're going to lose volume, you're going to lose um, uh, um, 
the uh, you're going to get some distortion. There's going to be a lot more uh, issues, and the and it's not just the final um, audio, the, not the final uh, power tubes that you got to worry about. You also have to worry about the, um, the all those dual triodes, because because uh, those feed the uh, those tubes, and and if the dual if the dual triode like a 12 AX7 isn't well matched then you're feeding it out of kilter, okay? And so uh, the audio guys get crazy nuts over this stuff. But a lot of times it's bogus, you know? If you go to a website, and the, one website really gave an entire definition of how they match their tubes and how they run them on curve tracers. And then in the end, this is the best part. He says, and if your tube goes bad, just send us the number that it was when you bought it, and we'll send you replacement. It'll match right up with the other one. Uh, wait a minute. What if you've been using it for 10 years, and the other one's as shot as that one was? You know, it's like no. You know, they didn't. They didn't get the picture. They didn't. They didn't understand. You can't just replace one tube and expect them to be matched again. Okay. You got to have them both together, and you can. You can see whether or not they're matched very clearly on the curve tracer more so than any even the Jugundo will tell you how, what the plate currents are and what the um, transconductance is but but that's only a one operating point okay the curve tracer will allow you to set it to whatever operating point your amp works at and you'll see above and below it and and whether or not your your tubes are really well matched okay <clears throat> next question yeah um do you know how much uh, current your, your unit can source off high voltage, you know, for plate supply? How much current can it deliver? You know what, it, that's all addressed in my manual. I don't remember offhand. I know that when it's on the 1,000 volts, it's a lot less current, and when it's on the 20 volts, it's a lot so more it's current. power limited. Okay. So, um, would it be like in the 100 milliamp region for like a 6L6? Um, you know what, I'm not going to talk off the cuff, but no, we no. can look it up in all the right, manual. We'll talk later. Thank okay. you. Questions? Dave? One Dave? more. Yeah, Bob. Uh, uh, a, tra a bipolar transistor curve plots uh, plate current or collector current versus collector voltage. With right. Base current as a parameter. Right. Now, vacuum tube uses plate. Yeah. Um, plate if you go back here, you'll. Voltage as a I'm just going to show you that. Um, so you, that's all capable. Here, let me let me come back to. Uh, so, a cysteine donor must have a switch that uh, changes collector. Yeah, co it does. If I can get the there, I'm working the through all these videos here. Well, you need a current to voltage converter. Well, it's a pretty conventional circuit. Now, where was I? Oh, here we are. One more. Oh. Nope. So it must have a switch there. It's calibrated. Yeah, hang on. I'll show you. If I can get there. Yeah, there it is. See, the um, this range scale here has voltages, right? This is for the base step, uh -huh. but it also has amperage. Okay, yeah. and that's what you're talking about. Yeah. So if you're testing those those types of transistor or semiconductor devices, then you test with a uh, a current instead of the voltage. Yeah. Okay. So that, you know, like I said, this is a very very versatile curve tracer, and um, it was really the only competitor to Textronics. Okay. Anybody have any other questions or comments? We can talk about it afterwards. So, okay. No, um, it sweeps at twice the um, uh, twice the uh, voltage. The uh, line it's 120 120 hertz. <laughs> twice uh, the 60 hertz. This is strictly audio tubes and nothing else. Um, no, it does the rectifiers and. But you just can't stick any 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 tube like an IF. I mean, any tube in, from a radio circuit. It's not going to. Yes, you can. Yeah, you you pretty so much any you can. Tube can be checked. Yeah, almost any tube at all could be it checked. It won't check yes. them at frequency. It'll only check them at 120 hertz. Thank you very, very much. much. Thank you. Thank you. Dave will remain for a few minutes after to sign autographs and answer questions. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Dave. Sure.
give us a few minutes to uh, switch over for the auction and we'll do that. You want to stop your video?